Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. This is, in fact, the first edition of Doom Mod Madness since I've arrived back in the UK. And I'm all fully set up now, all my, my stuff is exactly where I want it to be in my new office. And today we are, of course, checking out John Romero's remake of Episode 1, Mission 4, also known as Command Control. And this is a, a fairly interesting remake because it's it's not just for the sake of remaking it. It was also done to give you a few hints, let's say, as to what John Romero will be going for in his new upcoming game, Black Room. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock and missed the announcement of Black Room, it's a new IP that Romero is developing with Adrian Carmack, fellow founder of id Software. And I must admit, it's an interesting sounding idea. It's centered around a VR environment that's gone a little bit haywire, and you need to go in and rectify the glitches and, and sort it all out. And it means that you can traverse a, a wide variety of locations within this environment, from you know, Wild West to medieval castles to, to futuristic cityscapes. But really, all we've got to go on here is fancy concept art. And that doesn't really get people enthusiastic, let's say, especially when you're dealing with something like a Kickstarter. They like things to be a bit more tangible, have a bit more of a clearer idea of what it's going to actually look like in motion. And this this is the best we've got in that regard with this particular map. Granted, the uh, the actual finished product in Black Room will uh, definitely look a fair bit more sophisticated than this, but it at least gives us a few interesting insights into the kind of level design that Romero is aiming for. For example, this is radically different from the original Command Control. That map started with a fairly open area with multiple rooms that you could run through and double back on yourself with, but here, everything is very clearly laid out. You'll have no doubt noticed the big numbers on the floor pointing you towards either a switch or the area that that corresponding switch unlocks. It's a pretty unorthodox design, especially in relation to original Doom level design, which was chiefly centered around the collection of key cards and unlocking those corresponding doors in order to progress, but there's not a single key card to be seen in this particular stage. Instead, what we've got is this numbered sequence of areas that each offer a slightly different style of encounter, but this one right here, Area 3, is quite possibly one of my favorites. It's just layered extremely well. It works as a, a nice microcosm of the entire stage. This switch gives you access to the raised platforms and gives you direct line of sight to this previous area that we've already crossed through up the top there. And the extra enemies also mean you've got to constantly watch your back and refer back to these previous areas, not discount them as something you've already traveled through and finished with. There's always something ready to kind of catch you off guard from behind. And I, I like that, that interaction between these component pieces of the level. It, it makes it feel much less linear and more of a, a puzzle box that you're slowly opening and expanding. It's, uh, it's satisfyingly intricate. That's definitely the phrase I'd use to describe what's going on here. And I, I just love that Romero doesn't let a big room go to waste. There's multiple things going on. You've got raising platforms. You've got lifts that can reveal ambushes and take you to secret areas like this one. And there's just a really impressive density of design here. The there's no fat on this level. It's all lean. Everything has a purpose. It all propels you towards the next objective and some of you may think that the numbered switches and areas may be a little on the nose a little too much leading by the hand but it kind of relates to something i think i remember romero saying that he hates when there's a switch you flip but the effect of the flip switch isn't always immediately apparent and that definitely makes sense here because this switch there's nothing to indicate exactly what it's done in this area other than the big four on the ground. I mean, without it, I'd probably be pretty lost. I'd be flailing around a fair bit before I figured out where to go next. And that does have the effect of taking the player out of the level. With the numbers, you're invested. You know what the next objective is. You know exactly where to go next. It keeps you moving. It keeps the level flowing. And it's, it's a much appreciated inclusion. So, bearing all of this in mind, what implications does this have for Black Room? 
Well, for one, we can certainly assume that Black Room is going to be a game that's fairly old school in its sensibilities. And with that, I'm hoping it'll cut out a little bit of the chaff that the FPS genre as a whole has accumulated, let's say, over the last decade or so. I'm also looking forward to more interesting level design because, I don't know about you, but uh, first-person shooters of late have gotten a little boring when it comes to interesting level layouts and environments to explore and conquer. But if this is anything to go by, then we can be confident that Blacklist will have a nice variety of interconnected environments that do interesting things as you traverse them. I mean, there's one thing in particular this level does that I'm quite eager to see realized in Black Room, and that's the way that as you go through the levels, certain walls will drop and they'll reveal previous areas that you've already been through, much like in Area 3 where we had that direct line of sight to a raised area with a few extra enemies. But it makes the entire level feel more tangible, more solid, and it's a pretty rewarding feeling when that wall drops and you recognize that preceding area, and it's something I like to call the, ah oh, yeah, moment. And, <laughs> oh, I'm about to die. Okay, we need some health. Thankfully, I know there's a secret around here with a big fat soul sphere in it, so hopefully we can finish this level in one piece. But as I was saying, that, that coherence of level design is something that was also present in Romero's remake of Phobos Anomaly. That ability to look through windows at preceding areas and, and visibly see the progress that you've made and see that this place is in fact one interconnected whole, not just some loose collection of rooms. The real test for me, though, is whether Black Room will be able to maintain this coherence across its multiple level themes. I mean, from medieval castles to, to the Wild West, that's, that's a fair bit of themic whiplash that you've got going on there. And being able to make those two very disparate things feel interconnected is going to be an extremely tricky thing to pull off indeed. But with the theme of a, a VR environment gone haywire, I can see that pulled off in very interesting and entertaining ways. But in either case, this is just pure speculation on my part. I mean, all we've got to go on here is the level design of a remade Doom map. And as with all things in game development, things can radically change. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some actual real gameplay footage from Black Room so I can get a bit more of a, a clearer idea of what Romero and Adrian Carmack are going for with this. But until then, the link, as usual, is in the description below if you want to play this particular map. The link to Smooth Doom is also down there, which is the other mod that I've been using during this particular video. And hopefully you've enjoyed my ramblings. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as any suggestions for mods you'd like to see me play in future episodes of Doom Mod Madness. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Mr. Icarus. Icarus out.